So Nate and I went to a restaurant tonight, and I'm pretty indecisive in general, especially whenever it comes to a menu. So pretty often, I will like decide between two things and then ask the server for their opinion on which I should get. Often, servers at restaurants have tried some of the food and maybe know what dishes are better than others. It's not an unusual request. Not an unusual request. So tonight, I asked our server, should I get the pad thai or the rice? And he said, and now listen to this, he said, I don't know, I just work here. (laughs) I I don't know. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I don't know. I just work here. Obviously. That's why I'm asking you. I was I was trying to like keep my cool and just be like, "Okay, well, then I guess I'll just have this." But all I wanted to say to him was, "I understand that. That's why I'm asking you which one I should get. Yeah, he's the professional in this situation. He's the professional in the situation. He knows more about their pad thai and their fried rice than I do. So then after he said, I don't know, I just work here, he then went on to ask me how hungry I was. And was then explaining something about how the rice would be more filling than the rice noodles? Question mark? It was very unscientific. It was very unscientific. And, 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 and to be clear, he for some reason thought that the fried rice would be more filling, which is totally wrong. Like, I got pad thai and she got fried rice. The pad thai was a bigger dish. It was more filling, which was the opposite of what he said. And if I am asking for his opinion on which one is better... I'm not asking his opinion on which one is more food. I, In fact, I cannot think of anything that I would care about less. <laughs> now, if I had asked him which one of these is more food, then maybe that seems like an appropriate response. But even then, I cannot think of a single question that I could have asked him at the restaurant to which an appropriate would response would be to say, I don't know, I just work here. (laughs) How dumb. Also, for the record, both Nate and I have been servers before. I served for about, uh, I think, two years. Yeah, I think two years. I served for four. Yeah. So, we totally understand the restaurant service industry. We get it. It's tough. Sometimes being asked recommendations is kind of sticky. I understand that. I don't know. I just work here. Is There's just never a good reason to say that. Even if you don't know, even if you haven't worked there that long, you can always recommend what everyone else orders. So even even if you just say, I haven't tried all the menu items, but people seem to really like the pad thai that's a perfectly reasonable response because you're saying this is this is the crowd favorite or even if you just say i don't know i have no preference between the two that's fine hey that's still unhelpful though it no it totally is unhelpful but it's not crazy that's not something a crazy person would say i've been to a restaurant before and asked for a recommendation between the two and my server said honestly i don't know I'm vegetarian, and I haven't had either of these dishes. I totally understand that. I don't actually expect my server to have a full extensive knowledge of the menu and to have tried every dish. At the restaurant that I worked at, I kind of had that knowledge, but because I had also been eating at that restaurant for a long time. But to say, I don't know, I just work here, there's just no good excuse for that. Inexcusable. That is the official ruling of this podcast. Official ruling of this podcast. If you say, I don't know, I just work here. Wrong answer. uh, Wrong answer. I will personally arrest you for your restaurant crime. And you will go to customer service prison. 
And just to like top off the weird experience at the restaurant, I was in the bathroom, and while I was in the bathroom, three different guys came in just to pee. All three of them, instead of using one of the two unoccupied urinals, went into a stall and then just stood up. And I have no idea why. I get that if everything's full. You know, I, I've seen it happen like at sports events or conferences or things like that. If everything's full, then yeah, you'll just go in whatever you need to. But I have no idea why you would choose that when there's two perfectly good urinals right there. They're they're easier to use. I think there's something in the restaurant. Maybe it's a ghost of the previous Chezwan restaurant that was there. Well, didn't you even mention that whenever they went to the bathroom, it's not like they closed the door to the stall. No, like, no, it's not, not like they were wanting more privacy. They just preferred. No, they the didn't toilet, sit down. They I just guess? stood up. They just they probably. I don't even know if they pulled up the lid, which is inconsiderate if they didn't. Since Nate and I have both spent a lot of time in the food service industry, Nate especially, we are both we both kind of have an eye for what is wrong at a restaurant. And this restaurant, the what not the eating area, <laughs> the dining room, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. The dining room Previously, whenever it was Szechuan, the Chinese restaurant, it had like a couple rows in the center of the dining room of booths and then, you know, tables and chairs here and there, which is kind of standard for a restaurant. Restaurants try to have as many booths as possible because that's what people prefer most of the time. But the new restaurant there had taken out all of those extra booths, just left the ones against the wall. And then just put in all of the tables and chairs in the room. And there's nothing to separate any of it. There's not anything to divide it up. It reminded me of a cafeteria. Like when you go to camp. Yeah, that's exactly what it was like. Big concrete floor, tables everywhere. Pretty loud. Loud music, loud people. And it wasn't really decorated at all. Like they had really cool, unique light fixtures. That I know they brought in. Like Edison bulbs. Yeah, you know, so they were pretty neat. The only decor on the walls was Stella Artois posters. I've kind of already had a strange impression from this restaurant. It is an Asian fusion restaurant with some Thai, some Vietnamese, you know. So they have fried rice and pad Thai and curry and pho. But also... Chicken fried steak. But also chicken fried steak and burgers and tacos. It was just, it was a very strange experience. The food was very good. Yeah, it was, it was good. And I wouldn't say that our service was inherently bad. Like, he brought us everything we asked for. Our food was the way we ordered it. He kept our water filled for the most part. But it was just, it was just very odd. It It looked to me as if... As if the restaurant wasn't fully thought out. And Nate actually mentioned that the the owners were business school graduates from SFA, the college here in town. And that neither of them actually had any experience working in a restaurant. Well, I don't know that for sure, but oh. that's my assumption. Oh, okay. It's very possible. That it's r- how about this? The restaurant feels like it's run by a business school graduate. The restaurant feels like it's run by business school graduates who... Not someone who's worked in a bar for 15 years. Yes. Precisely. So, weird experience. So, I guess that's our highlights. <laughs> Earlier in the evening, before we went to the restaurant, we went to go see a movie. Cold Pursuit. Which is the... Starring Liam Neeson and uh-huh. Tom Bateman. Uh-huh. And both Nate and I, huge Liam Neeson fans. I will see just about anything he's in. This was a film primarily about revenge. As many good Liam Neeson films, Liam Neeson's character suffers a great loss 
and then goes after the people who caused that loss. But this movie was kind of a dark comedy. So it was kind of your standard Liam Neeson's going to go kill the bad guys. But also, it was funny. And it was really good. I loved this movie. I loved this movie. I really enjoyed it. It was... We we made a friend outside and talked to him about it. And he said, you know, it's just... It's not like another movie that I've seen before. It's just... It's doing its own thing. It reminded me... It, a little bit of the Kingsman movies. But I liked it a lot more. And it just wasn't, it was it was funny, but it wasn't corny. Yeah, it wasn't weird. There weren't a bunch of weird things in it. It was just they kind of took your normal movie of that genre and just threw some some comedic relief things in the mix. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. 10 out of 10 would see again. We really like thriller, chaser, crime, suspenseful things. And so this had all of that, but also it had the comedy. And I love comedy films, but most of them are kind of the way of like The Hangover or Step Brothers and that kind of humor, which I generally don't care for. Um, I have liked movies of that kind that I've seen, but it's certainly not my preference. I wouldn't pay to go see it in a theater. And outside of those, there's not really any other kind of adult comedy movies. You know, there's rom-coms. Or chick flicks, which are, you know, all kind of funny, but nothing like this. And so I got to have those same comedic reactions, but from something that also had a really strong story. And it had cool action shots and guns. And had really good action shots and, like, lots of blood being spit up by people whose teeth just got knocked out. And all those good things. People getting what they deserve. One more good thing today. I was intending to get up early and go take photos. I did not get up early. (laughs) As is often the case. Saturdays, it's just hard to get up early. Even when it's something that I like doing and I want to do. In my defense, it was very overcast, so there wouldn't have been any sort of amazing sunrise to see. But I got up about nine, and I spent about two hours taking photos. I drove to SFA, our local college, spent some time there at a parking garage. All those shots were garbage. None of them turned out good. I figured since you didn't show any of them to me. I spent the rest of the time kind of driving around the west side of town. I just followed a road that I had been on before. Found a nice little church. That's where most of my photos came from. Lone Star Baptist Church. Looks kind of like a cowboy church to me. And I haven't even heard of that church before. But we have a lot of churches in Akadochis. An astounding number of churches in Akadochis. Yeah, you can really tell we're in the Bible Belt. For sure. And probably fully half of them are Baptist. But I got some nice photos of it. It was a nice little quaint country church. About 10 miles outside of town. But I always enjoy taking photos. I don't get to all the time. So that that was that was my real highlight. I think Shelby's was the movie. The movie was good too. I, I enjoyed our date. Mine was probably the movie, yeah. I was at the house today with the eight dogs. As they were running around, I noticed that one of the Great Danes with particularly large jowls was running around and he had a string of slobber hanging down about halfway down his body, which is a lot of slobber because Great Danes are very tall. So we're talking like a foot or two of slobber. Yeah, like it was a substantial, it was a substantial amount. And he was running around and I saw... (laughs) 
the string of slobber was waving around in the wind, being knocked around, and I saw it swing up and stick to the side of his face. (laughs) And he was so upset by the string of slobber stuck to the side of his face, and he was... He flopped himself down on the ground and he was rolling around and rubbing his face in the grass trying to get it off. And he he just couldn't quite get it off. So he ran over to one of the little miniature schnauzers and just rubbed his face all over the other dog. And he finally got it off. And then now the miniature schnauzer was running around with a string of slobber stuck to his back. What a bully. What a bully. Anyways, it was one of the funniest things that I've seen. Very gross for me personally. I really do not like slobber. That's really the only thing with dogs that I will kind of cower away from a little bit. So I definitely did not get super close to him in this situation. But it was very funny to watch from afar. You weren't going to help. I certainly was not going to help. I had no intentions to intervene. I had no plans to help this little schnauzer. Now... He quickly rolled on his back onto the grass and mostly got it off, kind of. I mean, I'm sure it's embedded in the fur, but that is is not a situation with which I would really be of much assistance. It's amazing. I was thinking, I was like, man, so many good things happened today. I feel like the whole day was a highlight. And I was like, man. The whole day was a highlight. If only every day was like this. If only every day was Saturday. Yeah, the only uh, difference is work. Well, see see you tomorrow. tomorrow.